All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back with Sanati again, and this is part three of the Saturn Ketu conjunction. In the first part, uh, he beautifully explained what things can happen during this conjunction, and in second part, I was just sharing some of my experiences, and he also shared about the eclipses. So, if you have not watched it, then please go and watch. Okay, interesting both the parts. So now he is going to share uh, some details about uh, conjunctions, like he was. saying last time i stopped him <laughs> please continue <laughs> they always give certain names to certain conjunctions like different astrologers and there are different gurus curses guru chandal and saturn k2 uh when i was learning astrology was one of these guru curses oh. i think uh, i am very um uh against fear based astrology so i don't believe that we should ever say anything a curse everything we receive from our karma is a blessing even though we do not experience it this way it's not fair to call it a curse but so i like to come up with funny names new names that we can understand these energy and i think of saturn and k2 as the karmic bounty hunter because all of our misdeeds our immoral actions our unethical behavior we accumulate karmic debt this is like a bank account okay so we have a karmic debt bank account and with every immoral or uneth unethical action that we take or a dharmic against dharmic action that we take we contribute money to the bank account uh of our uh of our of our karmic debt now saturn and k2 when i believe they're together they come to collect the debt oh interesting they are coming to say you've accumulated this uh difficult karmic debt and now it's time to pay the piper which means the bounty hunter that comes to get you in america there's this ridiculous show um called dog the bounty hunter and basically there are these different um people on the show that have committed crimes and they owe money and they didn't come to court and when you don't come to court um not always the police force can go send you to go pick up the person so there's a bounty that the person receives if they go and collect the person okay interesting so that so this dog the bounty hunter person would show up to the person's house with guns and a huge squad and he would say you're coming to jail you're coming to court so similarly sagittarius is the sign of law Sagittarius is the sign of the legal system. Purvashada is a nakshatra which is associated with the legal system. So there is this energy here of the bounty for the legal system. So it is a very very bad time to commit crime. because the consequence is being so severe with this bounty hunter debt collector energy of Saturn and Ketu. um but if you're leading righteous life this could be the most positive time for spiritual emancipation to remove all the parts of yourself what you're no longer serving you but as bobby g mentioned we have to surrender our desires we have to surrender our plans but 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 uh you know a lot of time the people have karm uh collected this karmic debt and this is one thing that we've already seen with saturn in uh poor bashada uh because uh bill cosby go to jail for all of his uh he commits sexual uh violence against women also there's been a lot of energy which is saying that there is a uh, um sexual perversion in the catholic church these are all things what you're bubbling to the surface i think that these things are going to hit a climax which means all of the truth all of the um debt and and trust me the the what the church has been doing is a karmic debt which they've been collecting and eventually they are going to have to pay that price and i think that's one of the things that's coming here but for us for individuals we have porvashada in our chart we have uh planets in sagittarius in our chart what karmic debt do we owe what secrets do we have what illegal things do we kind of do in our own privacy but are not willing to uh admit to everyone that we do 
So these are different things what you're coming, but I believe there is a debt collection, a bounty collection of Saturn and K2, but it's our karmic debt. It's our karmic debt, which we're having to now take accountability for, take responsibility for. Yes, and what I also feel is regarding uh, this transit specially happening in Sagittarius, which is the original ninth house of the zodiac. So wherever Sagittarius can be, but I've seen that, you know, that feeling of that need of that guru and that higher things, it is always there in Sagittarius, irrespective of that house. So what I would, what I see regarding this Sagittarius transit is that now whenever K2 transits any sign I have seen that your beliefs regarding that sign and your your own self that's tested because when because K2 also shows you know past life karma. So it can happen that in the past, what you have, whatever you have, you had done in the area of uh, spirituality, because ninth house is spirituality, that that can be tested. And because of this uh, Rahu and Mars, you know, in Gemini, you no, know, it can happen that you get up, you get some allurements, and then you have a choice, as you said now, you know, that it's a great time to, it's a very bad time to commit some wrong, something illegal. So it can happen that we get that temptation, but then we have to use our spiritual practices like daily meditation and reading of our holy books and meeting our gurus and you know maintaining a good lifestyle, a sattvic lifestyle. We have to use those tricks and techniques by which we can actually be in Sagittarius and not end up going into Gemini. You know, because Rahu has this tendency to pull you. you know, I, I always see that wherever Rahu is, he will pull you that side. And the funny thing is uh, that they say that Rahu is exalted in Gemini. <laughs> and they say that Ketu is also exalted in Sagittarius. Some say he's exalted in uh, the sign of Scorpio. And some say that his Mula Trikona is Pisces. But irrespective of that, uh, these the sign of Sagittarius deals with spirituality. So now what could happen is that if if you have made some show business of your spiritual practices like uh, in many places it happens and especially in India this happens and I don't uh, mean to intend to offend anybody I'm just sharing my experience like in India there are many people who have you know the show guru show guru means once in a year what they will do is they will invite their guru to their home and then they will call 20 relatives and in front of them they will show that Oh, Guruji, I am giving you, you know, one lakh rupee donation. You know, one lakh rupees around, I guess, 1300 uh, euros or 1500 USD around that. You know? So once in a year, they will give some donation and they will, you know, take the photo and, you know, they will take some selfies. So it's like a show guru. <laughs> and that guru is also <laughs> such a funny guru. <laughs> I mean, he's not a guru, but if he, if he just comes and sits, he, he will just say, Sab shubh hoga. he will just give the hand like this, you know everything will be okay but uh, he's not able to guide you uh, through the knowledge of the scriptures he's not able to enlighten you you know that 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 thing which is there that enlightenment which is the main aim of a guru that he may not be able to provide but what you are doing is you just use him as a show piece you know because in india till today i mean if you are a bit religious or spiritual then people think oh you know he's like a very good person he's a elevated person you know <laughs> he has material desires but oh he talks of god and spirituality he's like a big person you know he's his consciousness is very high so then you get a lot of name fame praise and all such stuff you know within the society if you conduct some big spiritual program so now if you have if you have been doing that and i know many people in my uh, in my group also who do that sometimes so uh, then you need to be careful there because it can happen that you know that show show business that showbiz which you are doing there that could be exposed or <laughs> the guru who comes he might face some accusation these kind of things can happen this is what i feel because or if suppose you have some guru or you have a spiritual practice then what is your commitment to that practice? Are you doing it every day? Are you doing it every morning or every evening? Whatever you are supposed to do, you know, whatever yoga or asana or pranayama or what, whatever you are doing. I mean, not the physical yoga I am saying, which is ashtang yoga. 
but any yogic process you know there are many people who are doing kriya yoga these days many people are into bhakti yoga many people are into ashtanga yoga so whatever spiritual practice you have now is the time i think you will be doing a reality check on yourself that okay is this what i am supposed to do or am i supposed to do something else <laughs> that that's what i think is going to happen because this is in sagittarius i think that's beautiful i think the show guru as you parted put it he accumulates a lot of karmic debt nothing yes. nothing, nothing is um more deceptive than than um the false guru so so this is something that it uh the, those false gurus they are going to have to pay their debt too yeah. and those people who click selfies they also <laughs> and another thing which i felt regarding purva shada is that like uh, for jeshtha nakshatra we have that story you know when in shrimad bhagavatam it is mentioned that indra kills vritrasura and later on the sins you know haunt him very much and then they say that in mula nakshatra that's the time when you are being challenged by those haunts of your past but in purva shada when you come they say that he does penance over a lotus you know to get free from his sins so uh, this is the time where if you are already doing some spiritual practices it's great but this is the time that we need to uh, as they say in hindi na no? dose badha do <laughs> increase the you know that power if you are doing maybe one mala of any mantra you do it two malas or if you are doing 10 do it do it 14 or 16 you know if you whatever you are doing increase the dose because now the universe is telling it is time to cleanse so if you do it now if you do things more rigorously on the higher front then you will see great results i mean <laughs> Yeah and in the same spirit of Bubby G said uh when it comes to uh these practices um it's it's a very good time to formalize the sadhana which means to um make your practice your spiritual practices everyday spiritual practices it's also a very good time to formalize relationship with a specific lineage or a specific guru but we talked about the false guru so so also with the rahu mars aspect the person who you think is a guru might not really be in 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 its ultimate sense in the ultimate side a real guru and we've seen this a lot of time with different gurus the scandals whether it's perversion or this thing or that thing we that's something which i i you know is important to mention is too so 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 yes it's a great time to formalize uh your your religious tradition your your spiritual practices your lineage but make sure that that is pure because if it is not you are going to go down with it you're going to go down with whatever the false lineage is for example there was the bikram yoga person and then he committed a uh, sexual perverse acts and then now everyone who does bikram yoga is associated with that act of the bikram yogi who committed the sexual violence so oh, this is just an example but you you have to be careful with the false guru the show guru because you will go down in the fire with them yeah and even uh, in 10th canto of shrimad bhagavatam there is the story of putana you know in, in fact one of my gurus he was telling me that uh when krishna was there in vrindavan he had killed so many demons you know but it's very interesting when we read we will think oh he killed sakta so this asur that asur putana and that's all you know end of the story but it's not like this actually he every demon which krishna had killed in vrindavan when he was small shows one one weakness which we have and you bro- and we discussed about this false guru thing you know and then they say that he he told me that putana putana was that lady she was that rakshasi that uh, not that she was that female demon who actually was sent by kamsa krishna's uncle that you go and feed krishna your breast milk and she had poison in her breast so whenever krishna because krishna was a very infant he was extremely small that time so when krishna drinks it then he will die 
but then what happened was uh, you cannot just enter like this you know everybody will catch you so she dressed herself as beautiful as goddess lakshmi it is said in bhagavatam it is there in 10th canto mm-hmm. and when the people of vrindavan they saw her they started thinking that wow maybe she is lakshmi only you know <laughs> she's so beautiful beautiful not like you know in a way to enjoy but she was looking very graceful elegant she was having she was looking like a mother you know so everybody in vrindavan felt that my child should drink milk from her breasts then they will become very empowered you know <laughs> they'll become very strong but then uh, krishna came and uh, she then yashoda krishna's mother told her that please 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 come and feed me to my child and that's what she wanted and uh, then krishna as soon as uh, he saw her it is said that krishna closed his eyes <laughs> and there are eight reasons why krishna closed his eyes you know those eight reasons we will discuss some other time i mean w- one reason was that krishna was feeling very unhappy that this is the first demon i will kill in this avatar and unfortunately she is a woman <laughs> so my killing will start with lady so krishna was like oh i didn't want this you know and there are many other reasons of course so and then later on she uh, one she tried that uh, krishna drinks her milk and then when krishna started drinking then krishna started sucking her you know pran the life air and then uh, then then what happens this is interesting thing you know she changed her form into a beautiful uh, you know damsel when she came but when she was she was unable to bear krishna you know <laughs> <laughs> then her original form came out and there's a description how long she was you know some say she was 8 miles some say she was 11 miles long you know that was her height and she expanded expanded and krishna is still touching her breast and he's just sucking out you know, her life hair and then ultimately she falls down to the ground dead <laughs> so uh, that that is one very important lesson that when god comes you know he can rip off these false tendencies and false guru also means that we have a tendency to behave cheaply with anybody sometimes you know that okay he is giving something which i want so he is my guru anybody who is giving me something which i don't want he is not my guru so it's like this you know the world of cheaters and cheated so if you want to be cheated then you will also get a guru who will come and cheat you monetary you know emotionally sexually whatever it that's just a detail but if you are sincere that i want to really go to god then this proverb is you know when the student is ready the master appears so then this is the time to find the right gurus and to find you know people who yeah. can actually enlighten and we can there's a great potential for that uh, thing to happen if we are sincere in our efforts that desire is required that i want to go and find the right person then this will definitely happen baba ji let me ask you a philosophical question if how do you know that an asoria is an asoria if he's wearing a deva's clothes <laughs> well that's a very difficult question to answer you know how to find a right and guru I- And I mention this because Rahu he impersonate yeah. as Deva so he can drink the Amritam. Yeah. So 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 how so it, it it you're exactly correct. It begs this great great question. What is a what is a Deva versus an Asurya and how do you know that a true Deva a true guru is not truly deep down in Asurya has its own selfish materialistic goals? Yes so how do we know this is that because you can take the example of putana only na what happened when everything was fine then she was putting the covering right that she is a very beautiful lady she is from the heavens but when there is a difficulty then her original form came out so you will always see that uh, if you are taking inspiration from somebody at the level of a diksha guru then you can check their track record first of all track record means how they have been uh, in their past and more important than that is because they can run into some fake scandal or something so we keep that aside but more important than seeing their track record is to see those people whose hearts he ha- or she has transformed you can see those people that okay these people are following him for many 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 years and their lives have been transformed 
that means there is some substance in this person now that person may not be 100 percent perfect you know that may not nobody be necessary. Is. nobody yes. is but if we see that that person has transformed the hearts of so many people like for example in uh, my case when i went to south india in 2010 so many of my friends you know we had so many bad habits i used to eat so much meat and there's so so many people used to eat alcohol but then later on when we met our you know spiritual gurus and guides then all of the things they were vanished completely <laughs> so what in that guru what we can see is how much dedicated he is to his own spiritual practices and there's a very simple way to judge this you know i mean uh, you you have to see how addicted to god he is <laughs> You know, our, our Asura is addicted to, you know, vices like Ravana, for example. He likes the wife of Lord Ram. So he says, oh, I'm going to take her. You know, I, I want Rambha, so I will go and rape her. He does that, you know, in the heavens. I want Vedvati, I will take her. So basically what Ravana is doing, he's addicted to sex, basically. But on the other hand, if a guru is genuine, he will be addicted to God. And how do you know somebody is addicted to something? He will always be speaking about that thing, right? He will always be doing anything in that line. So if he is addicted to God, you will see 24 hours he is speaking about God. 24 means not literally, but you will, you will uh, get that feeling that yes, he is very much addicted and his actions will reveal that. And yeah. at an at a external level, you have to see which are the people he has already transformed. And if you And you can ask them that what is your experience? how you were before meeting him and how you are after meeting him. That's like the barometer. And apart from that, you have to use your own intelligence and pray to God. So this is how I think we can find somebody. In, in my limited experience, this is how I have experienced. Beautiful. That, that I like they say the proof is in the pudding. You have to learn from the disciples exactly. and to know their experience. That's beautiful. Exactly. Uh, everything said 100% resonate with me and it's good instruction for anyone who is trying to separate um, and find someone who can truly help them through their spiritual evolution and karma. And, yeah, um, because people say that oh, all the gurus are fake. But what I say is, you know, that uh, one of my gurus, he gave an example. Whenever you say that this is a fake currency note, suppose I give you a US dollar and you touch it and you know this is fake. What is the meaning of that? It means that somewhere in the universe, there is an original dollar note, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. That. <laughs> that note has to be there. Otherwise, how do you know this is fake? There is no distinction then. What is real? What is fake? So whenever you find that there is something fake, then that means there is an indication that somewhere in the universe, <laughs> that is there. And now the question is, how do we find, in my experience, what I have learned myself and what my gurus have told me is, you just need one thing in spiritual life. Nothing else you need, you know. You don't need mantras, you don't need books, you don't need even gurus, nothing you need. Only one thing you need, that is desire. <laughs> if you have sincere desire in your heart, God will put you in a place. And I'm not just bluffing this. This is there in Srimad Bhagavatam. This story of Dhruva Maharaj is there, you know. Dhruva Maharaj, he goes out to the forest because his stepmother insults him by saying that you get down from the lap of your father. You are not born from my womb. Her, her name was uh, Sur Suruchi. Suruchi told him that you have to take birth from my womb if you want to sit in your father's lap. But you have taken birth from Suniti. She is an inferior lady. All right, I don't know why she used to consider her inferior. So then Dhruva Maharaj was angry, you know. And then he went to his mother Suniti and he asked, tell me, how can I get a kingdom greater than my you know, father? My greater than His father was uh, Uthanapad and Uthanapad, his you know, ancestor was directly Lord Brahma. So Dhruva Maharaj said, I want a kingdom which is greater than Lord Brahma, who is the creator of the entire, uh, this Brahmanda. How do you get a kingdom greater than Lord Brahma, you know? <laughs> and then Suniti told him that uh, you have to go to the forest and then you have to meditate. And then Lord Vishnu can fulfill your desire. And when 
Suniti gave him this instruction. He went to the forest and he was just looking. And then Lord Vishnu directs Narad Muni that you go and tell him what to do. And Narad Muni comes and tells, chant this mantra, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. And then within six months, he sees Lord Vishnu. So because he had the desire, that is why Narad Muni was sent by God. And this is there in the Srimad Bhagavatam. I don't need to say anything. <laughs> All right. Anything else you would like to share? <laughs> <laughs> no, I hope everyone who had a chance to watch Bobby G and I discuss uh, the transit, its influence on our spiritual evolution, relationship with the guru. Um, just my last little bit is that we never approach Jyotish with fear. Yes. That we remember that even though these forces are powerful, um, and that means we respect them, we love them. We show devotion to them. But that does not mean that we fear them. And may the grace of the Guru always guide and protect. Amazing. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming and sharing. You know, I guess it was an amazing time. So we will get back soon. And <clears throat> you also do readings, I guess. Yes, I do readings. And my website is jyotishastrology.org. YouTube, Shanati Jyotish. So... Um, I'll be posting this video up there and Bubby G will be posting this as well. And we're, you know, he's going to be busy for some time, but we're going to do some future collaborations as well. So this is just a start of things to come. Yes, yes, definitely. Wonderful. Amazing. All right, then. Thank you very much for coming to Exotic Astrology first time and we will do more and more and more collabs. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank Namaste. You.